the past three weeks, the book of the prophet Amos. Uh, we've seen that Amos was a, a stern prophet with a message of uh, God's condemnation and judgment upon the nation of Israel. Uh, this morning we will conclude our, our studies in Amos by looking at Amos's prophecy of a brighter future uh, for the Jewish people in the days to come. <coughs> but before we do that, uh, I would like for us to consider uh, two general questions about the prophets that some people may, uh, may wonder about. Uh, we'll discuss these questions uh, briefly and uh, uh, I won't have any definitive answer uh, to the questions that I raise, but I, 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 I raise them to stimulate uh, 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 thought on your part as much as for any other reason. The first question uh, is this, exactly how did God speak to the various prophets and reveal his message to them? We have touched on this uh, in the past weeks, but let us uh, look in more detail, a little more detail this morning at this important question. In the opening verse of the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, the writer states that God has spoken in many different times and in many different ways uh, to his people through the prophets. Uh, and we've seen what some of those ways are. We've seen that God spoke to Amos and also to other prophets through a series of visions. God spoke to Daniel through dreams in the night. Uh, God spoke to the prophet Elijah in a still small voice. God spoke to the prophet Jeremiah through an experience in the workshop of a local potter as he observed the potter at work with a piece of clay, and he understood that God is like a skilled potter, molding our lives to be more and more like what he desires for us to become. <clears throat> we will see next week uh, that God spoke to the prophet Hosea through his love for his unfaithful wife. And yet there seem to have been other times when God spoke to the prophets more directly. Did God speak in an audible voice that the prophets heard, even as you hear me speaking now? Uh, did God dictate uh, his message word for word to the prophets so that they could write down exactly what they heard? Or perhaps did God place strong impressions of his truth? upon the minds of the prophets and, lead, and then lead them to put these messages into their own words. Uh, certainly the, the various prophets have their own individual writing styles and vocabularies and personalities that all come through in their writings. Uh, uh, so uh, suffice it to say that, uh, that God has spoken in many ways uh, to the, uh, to the prophets. Uh, I don't know exactly how in every circumstance they received their message from God. But I do know that when the prophets began to speak the message that God had laid on their hearts, they did it with the absolute and complete conviction that they were not speaking for themselves but we're delivering the very message of the living God. Then the, the second question I, I wanted to pose is this. <clears throat> Has the age of the prophets ended? Or does God still reveal his message to particular individuals uh, that they then can deliver to others? Uh, uh, saying it differently. In other words, are there modern day prophets among us even now? Uh, well, it depends in part on exactly how we define prophet, but uh, I, I, I would say that there are certainly men and women among us who uh, faithfully and powerfully deliver uh, God's message to their hearers. Um, we may think of such 
people as prophets, and, and I would not disagree with that. Uh, but I, I do not think, and this is personal opinion, do not think that there are prophets in the Old Testament sense of the word. Uh, I'm doubtful that God still speaks to individuals with a unique message uh, that he has revealed to them alone or that he reveals his future plans as he did the Old Testament prophets. Why, why do I say that? Well, let me go back to that passage in Hebrews and, and read a couple of verses. God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these last days has spoken to us in his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, to whom also he made the world. And he, that is Jesus, he is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the word of his power. Uh, the, the writer is saying that Jesus Christ uh, is the complete and final revelation of God to humanity. He is the word made flesh. Uh, God has nothing more to say to the world beyond what is revealed in the life and death and resurrection of our Lord. The task of God's messengers today is simply to preach the gospel of Christ. Nothing, no, nothing more needs to be added to it. Um, yeah, that, that at least is my understanding of the issue of whether there are any modern day prophets. Uh, you you may, ha may have some different thoughts and I, I want to pause a moment and um, invite you to chime in. If, uh, if not, we're going to turn back to the book of the prophet Amos and look at his message of what lay ahead for the people of Israel in the distant future. Uh, and I want to read uh, from the ninth chapter of Amos, verses 11 through 15. And if this works, I'm going to lost the sound. <clears throat> John, uh, somehow or other, you got muted. Uh, unmute your microphone. Okay. Sorry about that. <clears throat> well, let me. Uh, here, here I am. Excuse the delay. Beginning in uh, verse 11, the Lord says, a day is coming when I will restore the kingdom of David, which is like a house fallen into ruins. I will repair its walls and restore it. I will rebuild it and make it as it was long ago. And so the people of Israel will conquer what is left of the land of Edom and all the nations that were once mine, says the Lord who will cause this to happen. The days are coming, says the Lord, when corn will grow faster than it can be harvested and grapes will grow faster than the wine can be made. The mountains will drip with sweet wine and the hills will flow with it. I will bring my people back to their land. They will rebuild their ruined cities and live there. They will plant vineyards and drink the, drink the wine. They will plant gardens and eat what they grow. Uh, I will plant my people on the land I gave them and they will not be pulled up again. The Lord your God has spoken. <clears throat> God promises that the, the time is coming when the captivity and the wanderings of the Israelites will end when the Jewish people will be restored to their homeland and when they will enjoy a time of freedom and prosperity. I, I think that we need, 
to attempt an overview of Jewish history in order to understand this prophecy and its fulfillment. Of course, we could spend a lifetime studying the history of the Jewish people over the centuries. And in fact, many people have done just that. Uh, so I, I can attempt only the barest outline this morning, but, it, but I'll try to do that. And I'll break the, the history of the Jews down into uh, several different time periods. The first period would be the Old Testament period from the time of the preaching of Amos uh, uh, up until the end of the Old Testament era, maybe 300 years after Amos. After the preaching of Amos and Hosea, the northern nation of Israel was conquered, as we've discussed before, conquered by the Assyrians. And many of the people were taken away into captivity. However, some, especially among the poorer class, remained in the land. Uh, some 135 years later, the southern kingdom of Judah fell to the Babylonian Empire, and many of those people were taken into captivity. And, and time continued to roll on uh, with uh, the, the Jews scattered uh, in captivity in different places, some remaining in the land of Palestine, but some 50 years after the Babylonian captivity, the, the empire of Babylon was overthrown by the Persians, uh, and Cyrus the Great, king of Persia, uh, set the Jews free. At that time, many of them returned to their homeland and rebuilt the, the city of Jerusalem and the temple. Uh, so this, um, this is sort of the situation at the close of the Old Testament period. Many of the Jews from both the northern and southern kingdoms were now back in their homeland, but they were by no means an independent nation. Uh, they were uh, still under the direct control of the, uh, uh, of the Persian Empire and government. And going on then to discuss the, the Jewish history in the period between the Old Testament and the New, uh, the Old Testament era ended somewhere around 400 BC, uh, and, and the Persians continue, continued to rule over the land of Palestine uh, for, for several decades until about 330 BC. And then the, the mighty armies of Alexander the Great conquered all the Eastern Mediterranean area and, and far beyond, uh, including the, the land of Palestine. Uh, so, the, uh, so Alexander was, uh, uh, had a kindly view toward the Jews and, and treated them well, uh, but he died at an early age. Actually, he died before his 30th birthday. Uh, and after his death, his vast kingdom was divided into four parts. Uh, and we'll be concerned only with the two eastern parts, uh, which were controlled on one hand by the ruler of Egypt to the south of Palestine. And on the other hand, uh, the other party was uh, the ruler of Syria to the north of Palestine. And then, then for many, many years, these two forces fought back and forth and marched over and over again through the land of Palestine uh, and uh, uh, fought for control of the ancient land of the Jews. Eventually, uh, the Syrians, uh, who, were, who were known in history uh, as the Seleucids, uh, uh, came into control of Palestine, and they were very oppressive to the Jews, desecrating the temple, uh, forcing the Jews to worship other gods. Uh, the situation became so desperate that the Jews rebelled against the overwhelming uh, odds of, uh, of fighting against the mighty uh, armies of Syria. But they, they were led by a family known as the Maccabees, and, and several different members of that family headed the Jewish uh, forces during that period of time, and they, 
They fought against the far mightier Syrian armies and actually won their independence around 140 BC. Uh, and when they did that, they restored the, the traditional Jewish worship in the temple in Jerusalem. Uh, and they, they continued to exist as a more or less independent nation for about 70 more years, uh, maintaining a, at least a degree of independence during all that period of time. And then about 70 BC, the rising Roman Empire to the west conquered Palestine. Of course, they conquered most of the known world. Uh, and they remained in control of Palestine for several centuries. Uh, and it is during this uh, period of Roman control that the, that the New Testament uh, records are, are, are written in, in, the, in the life of Jesus and his followers uh, take place, the early followers. Throughout the New Testament period, the Romans remained firmly in control of Palestine. Uh, they allowed the Jews freedom, freedom of worship and, and a limited degree of political independence. Uh, the Romans in general were not concerned with uh, local religion and politics. They were mainly interested in collecting taxes and in guarding against any sort of armed uprising. However, the Jews, or at least a sizable portion of the Jews of that day yearned for total and complete independence from the Roman oppressors. And, and in the late 60s AD, this would, this would be well after the death of Christ uh, and, and uh, probably after the death of Paul and uh, uh, other of the, the leading apostles, the Jews entered into an armed rebellion against the hated Romans. And they were successful to the extent of being able to, uh, to retake the city of Jerusalem and establish a, a, a Jewish government in the city. Uh, it, but uh, the, the, uh, the Romans, of course, could not abide this. After some time, after a few years, uh, in the year 70 AD, the Romans sent a, a, a mighty army uh, led by General Titus, uh, later to become Emperor Titus. Uh, to <clears throat> and uh, Titus besieged the city of Jerusalem for about four months and brought about terrible suffering and starvation to the city uh, until it finally fell in, uh, in the latter part of the year 70 AD. And when it fell, the, the Romans marched in and they completely destroyed the city and the temple. The temple has never been rebuilt uh, since that time in 70 AD. Uh, and, and, and so the, the Jews put an end to this uprising, almost. Uh, but what did I say? The Romans put an end to this uprising. Uh, but the Jews outside the city continued the rebellion for a number of years, uh, most notably at a mountain stronghold known as Masada uh, near the Dead Sea. Uh, and, and there a, a, a large group of uh, Jewish soldiers and their families uh, hid out and, and uh, uh, fought against the, the Romans. Uh, but again, the Romans besieged uh, this stronghold in the years 73 and 74 AD, that is about four years after Jerusalem had fallen. Uh, and uh, the, the Roman forces were so overpowering that the, the Jews had no uh, chance of, of victory or even survival. Uh, and in a, uh, a, an act that's uh, been celebrated in Jewish history ever since, about a thousand in number of the Jewish defenders at Masada committed mass suicide rather than surrender to the hated Romans. And, and then the Romans drove virtually all the Jews out of Palestine. And Palestine ceased being a Jewish land 
There were hardly any Jews in Palestine for centuries after that, uh, for the next 1800 years, pretty much. So, so that brings us to the post-biblical period. Uh, by the end of the New Testament, very few Jews still lived in the land of Palestine. Instead, <clears throat> the Jews were scattered throughout the, the Mediterranean world and beyond. However, wherever they went, they held on to their own culture. They did not assimilate uh, into other lands. Uh, they, they, established their own closed Jewish communities in various cities and towns where they maintained their synagogues and study of the Torah and worship of God. And for many centuries, the, the Jews were often persecuted and denied many of their, uh, their civil rights uh, and driven from place to place and generally hated. Uh, throughout all of Europe. Perhaps the, the most notable persecution of the Jews in all this period was the Spanish Inquisition uh, in the late 15th century AD, when all the Jews in Spain, and, and there was a high population, they were all forced either to convert to Christianity or else to flee the country, uh, leaving all their uh, possessions behind or else to suffer terrible tortures and sometimes death. But, but in spite of these, <coughs> excuse me, in spite of these centuries of persecution, the Jews remained true throughout all these uh, centuries to their traditional religion. And in many cases, they prospered economically and made many important contributions to Western civilization. That brings us pretty much to modern times, the things that have taken place in Jewish history during my lifetime. By 1940, there were some 18 million Jews in the world, uh, concentrated mostly in Western Europe. And then came the, the greatest and most devastating tragedy in the long history of the Jewish people. Adolf Hitler came to power in Germany in the late 1930s. Uh, Hitler was a, a depraved, racist ruler uh, who hated the Jews with great intensity and was determined to rid Germany and all his conquered lands of the Jewish population. He and his cohort devised what they called the final solution to the, Jewish <laughs> to the Jewish problem, known in history as the Holocaust. Hitler built a number of death camps in Germany. He rounded up the Jews without notice, and without mercy, had them loaded like cattle into boxcars without food or water, and deported to the various death camps. Uh, there they were stripped and marched into large buildings, which were then flooded with cyanide gas. Uh, then the bodies were taken to large incinerators where they were cremated. Uh, the horrors inflicted upon the Jews as part of Hitler's final solution are beyond imagination or description. Uh, perhaps some of you have visited the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. Uh, if you did, you came away deeply disturbed at the terrible suffering the Jewish people endured under Hitler. All told, somewhere around six million Jews about, that is about half the Jews in Western Europe were murdered in the Nazi death camps. Surely by this point in time, after centuries of being scattered and persecuted 
and then almost annihilated in the Nazi death camps, the prophecy of Amos to the Jews about becoming an independent and prosperous nation in the land of Palestine must have seemed pretty much preposterous. And yet God's word is ever true. Uh, after the Holocaust, some of the remaining Jews in Europe and elsewhere uh, began to immigrate uh, to Palestine and join the, the few Jews who were already back in the land. Uh, by this time, the, the nation of Britain controlled the land of Palestine and with the, the support of the U.S. and the United Nations, uh, Britain was determined to return the land to the, to the Jewish people. Uh, this was against the, the determined, the near fanatical opposition of the Arab nations, which controlled most of the lands of the Near East. And to make a long story short, in May 1948, the Jews of Palestine declared themselves to be an independent nation and were recognized as such by virtually all the nations of the world. They soon fought three wars with the neighboring <coughs> Arab nations and were victorious in each instance with the support and assistance of the U.S. <coughs> Over the past 72 years, since 1948, the nation of Israel has grown, uh, has uh, become a prosperous land, has welcomed Jews from all over the world, and has become a bulwark of democracy in that troubled part of the world. The prophecy of Amos has been fulfilled. Uh, probably there will be additional chapters to write in this remarkable story as time goes on. But as we sit here this morning, the Jewish people have found in an independent and prosperous nation in the ancient land of Palestine, just as the prophet Amos foretold 3,800 years ago. It, it isn't, it's stranger than fiction. It, isn't that a, 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 just a marvelous, almost unbelievable story of, of God's word coming true after uh, so many uh, twists and turns over the centuries. Perhaps uh, someone wants to offer some thoughts about uh, what we've been talking about here in the last few minutes. So let me lead us in a closing prayer then. Our Father, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for each one who has participated in this lesson this morning and ask that you would uh, help us to, uh, to see deeper into your word and to uh, have the leadership of your spirit in our lives, our Father, that we might understand that your word is ever true uh, <clears throat> and that, uh, that you are in control of the fate of nations and of each of us as individuals. Uh, we pray again for, uh, for Larry and Lara and Sue, and thank you for the good news about Gene, and pray that you would be with each one of us in the, uh, in, in the upcoming week. Uh, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And next Sunday, we will begin a, a brief study of the prophet Hosea.